Welcome to page 17. We are going to do a theory page today. It's called Time Signatures. And uh, this is where some of your detective work will come in very handy and some of your math as well. So we did Are You Sleeping? This um, top of page 17 in the Time Signatures. Read those sentences there about time signatures and then let's look here. So we have 4-4 four, four, which means that there are four quarter notes in every measure. And then if you look down, we still have 4-4. Four, four. And the eighth notes in 4-4 four, four get half of a beat, so they're twice as fast. So that first two lines is exactly what you played on page 16. But we're going to try Brother John in 4-4 four, four with eighth notes starting out instead of quarter notes and sixteenth notes instead of the eighth notes. So it looks different on the page but I'll tell you that it will sound exactly the same except for your tempo will be different. So if we're going along here and we're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then this is da 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 da. Okay, I'm not singing the right notes, but that's the rhythm. Then if we go down here and we go one, two, this is going to be one, two, one, one, te, two, te, three, te, four, te. Ba 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 da 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 da. So it's the same notes, and if you keep that quarter note tempo the same, it will be twice as fast. But if you slow the quarter note down, it will sound exactly the same as this. So if we say we set the metronome to be quarter note at 70 here, but on this one we set the quarter note to be at 35, this will sound exactly the same. It looks different, but it will sound exactly the same. Now let's go down and introduce a 2-4 measure. So 2-4 if 4-4 four, four means that there are four beats, four quarter notes in every measure, 2-4 means that there will be two notes in every measure. So let's look here. Is there two? Yeah, the first measure has just D and E, then you have a measure line, and then you have F sharp and D in the next measure, D and E in the next measure. So composers will use these different time signatures in order to either use less space. See how this one took up two lines? Same amount of notes in this one, but it only took up one line because they're closer together. It also muddies it up just a little bit if you get too close together. This one will set a different kind of a beat. It can in music sometimes if 2-4 you want to have an emphasis on the first beat of every measure and a 2-4 music will make that feel like boom, boom instead of a 4 beat which will be boom, boom. So sometimes the emphasis for a composer will be every two beats and so they may go into 4. There's lots of different reasons to use different time signatures and there's lots of different kinds of time signatures. I want you to pull out some music that you can either look to online or music that you might be at home and look at time signatures and see what you see. Um, in this book, we're only going to basically do two, four, three, four, and four, four. But going along, you're going to learn six, eight, three, eight, um, different kinds of time signatures. They're very important to watch for because it tells you what the beat is and how many beats per measure. So if we go down here to 2-4, same notes as what you played on page 7, 16, but you only have two beats per every measure line. Um, 
I want you just to be aware of this because uh, theoretically it's a really important thing. Um, ooh, let's see. Time then wise. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to look at a piece that is in a different time signature. So this is French folk song. If you look here, you've got bass clef, two sharps, D major. Then we have a three over a four. Hmm. That means you're going to have three, let me get my pointer that's a little more exact. You're going to have three quarter notes in each measure. Well, let's look and see. One, two, three, measure line. One, two, three, measure line. One, two, three, measure line. What? And then we have a half note, but it has a dot by it. Now the dot equals half of whatever it follows. A dot can follow a quarter note, it can follow a sixteenth note, um, but whatever it follows it will be equal to the amount of half of whatever it follows. So half of a half note is a quarter note. So this gets two counts plus the third count. So it, that equals three. So a dotted half note in three, four is a whole measure. And then you have three quarter notes with some dotted half notes mixed in. This is all notes that you've learned. So you can go ahead and, and, and play this one. I'll do it with you a little bit if we have time here. And then let's go down to Hickory Dickory Dock. Also in D. 3-4, so 3 beats per measure, then we have a dotted half note. And look at here, you remember in one of the pieces, I believe it was Old MacDonald, we learned about quarter note rests. Well in Hickory Dickory Dock you have rest, rest, and then you have the third note where you come in. And then you have down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow, down bow, this one will be up bow, so don't try to do it down bow. We're going to do lazy bows still. So it comes in as an up bow. Three, four is a little tricky because each beginning of the measure, one will be a down bow, one will be an up bow, one will be a down bow. This comes naturally as an up bow, which is good for our pickup note. Then down bow, up bow, down bow, up bow. So if there's only two in each one, you're going to have the down bow, but sometimes these beginning measures will start on the up bow, and I want you to be aware of that. So let's try a French folk song and a little bit of Hickory Dickory Dock. All notes that you know. Rule, say your notes out loud, watch your position, get your position, relax your bow if it's not sounding how you want to, make sure you've got something with your position fixed, um, and Let's go ahead with French folk song. So we're only going to count in three. One, two, three. Then C sharp this time because of the second sharp. And all of the sharps, all of the C's will be sharp. Three, two, three, F sharps from the key signature. Let's do Hickory Dickory Dock just very slowly. So it starts on F sharp and we'll go one, two, three. Two, three, rest, rest. 
now up bow. line right there is called a slur line. In this case it is called um, a tie line. And a tie only happens on notes that are the same. So those two D's are the same. We're going to hold them for six counts. The other thing um, that I want you to be aware of is see that word moderato? Always in the past we've seen like the quarter note equals a certain tempo. Well, moderato means middle tempo. So we're going to do a moderate tempo. Now that hickory dickory dock sounded kind of sad to me. So let's see if we can do it a little bit faster. So your goal is to kind of work it up to this, this tempo. So practice. <laughs> so it'll be... Da, 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 da. One, two, three. One, I'll give you two measures. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two. example where we could have put it in a different time signature and done like 3-8 and done 3 or 6-8 or something like this. Um, you're not as advanced as that yet, but you're going to get to that point. But this is a good example where if a conductor wants or composer wants something to be quicker, he'll do it in a different time signature in order to make it look like it will be easier to do in a quick tempo. So work on all, work, work on time, remember time signatures, look up other time signatures, look at music and find them. You may not know what they mean yet, but, and then I will spend a good amount of time getting this so that it sounds nice, so that your fingers and your bow are all working together, you have a clear tone on everything. And the next video will be the duets that go along with all of these pieces.